Howdy, folks! In the previous sketch, we went over the steps of even chain fatty acid metabolism. But I'm sure that left you worrying, what about the odd chain fatty acids? Well, odd chain fatty acids are, uh, let's just say, odd. Odd chain fatty acids and certain amino acids are metabolized via the vomit pathway. I know, it makes you want to vomit. But don't worry, we'll walk you through everything. Welcome to the Odd West, dubbed the oddest ride in the wilderness. I think the only thing odd about the ride is the name, but I digress. An ode to California's gold rush, Odd West takes riders on a thrilling adventure aboard a minecart through the mountains of Sketchyland. Are you ready? Well, let's get to it. Now that we got the intro out of the way, we can talk about the vomit pathway, represented by the girl vomiting. Gross. Vomit stands for valine, odd chain fatty acids, methionine, isoleucine, and threonine. Look, it's not the best name. I didn't make it up. Don't sue me. I'm sorry. At least it's memorable. As shown in our diagram, these precursors undergo a series of biochemical reactions to eventually make succinyl-CoA. Let's start with the odd chain fatty acids, represented by the odd west sign. Odd chain fatty acids undergo beta oxidation just like the even chain fats, except they make 3-carbon propionyl-CoA during the last round. Similarly, the amino acids valine, methionine, isoleucine, and threonine are also metabolized to propionyl-CoA. We've illustrated a vulture for valine, mountain lion for methionine, ice for isoleucine, and three bears for threonine. You can check out our amino acids overview sketch to learn more about them. All of those ingredients ultimately get turned into propionyl-CoA, represented by that tasty, cheesy, delicious, melty, scrum diddly umptious pepperoni pizza and crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. Uh, dang, I guess I'm really hungry. In the next step, propionyl-CoA carboxylase, PCC, uses ATP to add a CO2 to propionyl-CoA, making methylmalonyl-CoA. This boxcar is PCC, and the B7 stands for vitamin B7, a.k.a. biotin. Like all carboxylase reactions, PCC requires biotin. We also need ATP, hence the 3P batteries. Finally, the black smoke from a nearby campfire wafting over the boxcar will help you remember that we add CO2. The product is methylmalonyl-CoA, shown by the kid holding a metal can of melon cola. Just a side note, the enzyme epimerase changes methylmalonyl-CoA from the D to L conformation. Take that, Trebek. Let's move on to the last step of the vomit pathway. Methylmalonyl-CoA mutase uses vitamin B12 to mutate methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA. What about those cobalt rockets? That's our recurring symbol for vitamin B12, aka cobalamin. The final product is succinyl-CoA, again represented by a cola with a straw. As you probably already know, succinyl-CoA can enter the TCA cycle to eventually make ATP. If you follow that dark, mysterious tunnel, eventually you'll get to the TCA cycle ride. I swear. Alternatively, when blood glucose levels are low, succinyl-CoA may be used to make glucose via gluconeogenesis. Please keep in mind that it still has to enter the TCA cycle and get converted to oxaloacetate before it goes through that pathway. For more information, please watch our TCA cycle and gluconeogenesis sketches. Last but not least, succinyl-CoA is a precursor to heme, hence the pathway leading to heme tunnel. The pair of ducks overlooking the heme tunnel will help you remember that we also need vitamin B6. Okay, let's summarize. Valine, odd chain fatty acids, methionine, isoleucine, and threonine are part of the vomit pathway. They are first metabolized to propionyl-CoA. Next, PCC uses ATP to add a CO2 group to propionyl-CoA, making methylmalonyl-CoA. This step requires biotin. Then, methylmalonyl-CoA mutase turns methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA with help from vitamin B12. 
Finally, succinyl-CoA can enter the TCA cycle, gluconeogenesis, or be used to make heme. All aboard. Last stop on the vomit train is Rancho Pukamonga.